don't know. Mustaine did a rig rundown the other day that was basically an ad for his new Gibson, and he did make a point of saying how great the paint on the silver ones are. So maybe he did respond. Well, of course he said the paint on the silver V was great. Like, what are you seriously expecting him to say? <laughs> no, it's got really bad flaws. Don't buy this? Come on, were you born yesterday? Hey everybody, hope you're having a hell of a morning. It's a Friday, can't wait to get this weekend started. I uh, just wanna say to anybody in the Fort Wayne area, I will be at Sweetwater today, so if you are in the neighborhood and wanna hang out, I'll probably be around a little bit that afternoon, uh, at least in the lunch area, cafeteria kind of thing. So I uh, hope to see you there. Anyway, uh, before we get into it, just want to remind you guys, you know, I did that shootout on the new Vintage 30 versus the old Vintage 30 there a couple weeks ago, and I uh, got a hell of a response, and a lot of you guys were like, hey, where can I buy an IR? Where can I buy an IR? Because we got a massive tone shift, and I mean this. So I, th I thought about it for a little while, about charging for one, and I'm like, nah, you know what, screw it. Let's just give it to you guys for free for just being awesome subscribers and coming back week after week after week. This is my gift to you. Links in the description below. I'm going to have a reminder on that in a couple minutes as well, just for shits and giggles. But yes, please grab a copy. Please do the speaker changing tutorial. Once people see it's not some black boxed secret knowledge, maybe the tone morons will wise up. Yeah, and if you've done seven other impossible things this morning, think about stopping by Millieways for dinner. Seriously, dude, you, you're expecting the tone stops to actually take, you know, quantifiable evidence and apply it to their own situation? <laughs> Why, they've spent money! No, 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 can't have any of that! Tubes, tubes, tubes! That's the key to the tone, you know? Your test was just bullshit, Glenn, and that Jim Lil guy's off his rocker, too. It's all about the tubes! You know, the, the old phrase, you can lead a horse to water, or a cup that is already full can't be filled anymore. This is the thing, if somebody already knows everything about tone, they're never, you're never gonna be able to convince them otherwise. You know, I've been sitting here for a very long time trying to figure out what's the, the big deciding factor. And yes, when it comes down to it, and get, as far as electric guitar tone is concerned, about 85 to 90% of it is all down to the speaker. And there's just no getting around that because the speaker's the part that's changing the electrical energy back into acoustic energy. So for those of you guys who are smart enough to realize, hey, this sounds really good, this is kind of neat. Yeah, grab that free IRR of mine. But on the subject of the actual original statement, yes, I am working on a speaker changing tutorial. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I know it's some really rudimentary stuff, but you know, there are a few things, like if you're doing wiring, you need to know how to get the proper spade connectors and you don't find them in an auto parts store. You know, there's certain little tricks to it like that. And there's always some overall tooling discipline as well. So, you know, your screwdriver doesn't jump off the screw into the speaker like I may or may not have done at one time. Yeah, make sure you'll watch that episode. It's going to be a lot of fun. Glenn, I think it's better to let the ignorant remain such. We can let the collectors continue to drive up the prices of vintage Gibsons and keep the speakers safely accessible to the players with budgets. Also, try an eminence Manowar. Dude, you're not the first guy to suggest the Manowar, so I am going to throw that on the list. I've also got the DV77 I need to do a video on, and I got a bunch of Mojo tones I still need to do as well. I, I think I had one episode where I featured the Greyhound, and I've, I've got their version of the green bag. It's called a blue something or other, and I got an old Carvin speaker from the 80s. Like, there's some really cool shit out there. And the great thing about buying speakers are they're they're not very expensive. I mean, yeah, I picked up that set of vintage blackbacks for 500 Canadian. So you don't have to drop hundreds and hundreds of dollars on stupid shit you don't need. Like I priced out a set of Jan Phillips 12AX7 tubes on the tubestore.com and five tubes, which would you know fit in a 5150 would cost $800 because they're premium and vintage and don't do a fucking thing to your tone that regular old tubes won't do. Oh, but they sound so much more spacious and have an open sound field, like whatever the fuck that means. Seriously, I need to make that video where we try out a bunch of different sets of tubes and then uh, listen to them while, while reading off the descriptions. <sighs> P.G. Barnum was right, there is a sucker born every minute and most of them buy vacuum tubes. Remember how much everyone loved CBS era fenders? Because I sure as hell don't. Now I see people bragging about the $4,500 CBS base they just bought. 
You know, I really wish people would brag about important stuff like maybe, I don't know, the $200 songwriting course that they bought. That would actually be helpful. That would actually help people create some better music. But, you know, I get it. I get it. It's all about prestige and whatnot. Ooh, look what I bought. Congratulations. You're in debt. Overproduction is the corporate effect on music. Once a formula is successful, it becomes the pattern for everything that follows it. It's got to fit what sales criteria or it is scrapped. Home studios and self-production really is a breath of fresh air compared to late 80s and 90s big label production of music. You know, I agree with the first half of that statement about overproduction. I mean, like, when Nirvana broke, next thing you knew, we had, you know, 10 billion shitty fucking grunge bands being signed, and it, none of it was very good at all. But everybody wanted to have the next big thing. That's why Megadeth got a deal so fast after Me Metallica got signed, is because it was basically another Metallica. I get it. Record companies want to go with the formula and go with what's hot, even if they're not doing anything groundbreaking. The ultimate goal of a record company is to make money. Now it seems that we've shift production out of, you know, the big studios and away from the record labels and have gone more independent things. Now it's just following a formula times a billion. How many Polyphia clones are out there right now? How many periphery clones are out there right now? And they all have the most hilarious names. They're always about architecture or something like that. It's like, oh, fuck's sakes. Yes, 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 we get it. You can play guitar real well. <laughs> can you write a song? That would be nice. Oh yeah, just a, just a mid-episode break here. I'm not selling anything this week. I just want to give you guys a heads up to get that free impulse response because it will take your sound from the old Vintage 30 to the new Vintage 30, like this. Once again, that's an absolutely free download. My way of saying thank you for subscribing and watching the show. Links in the description below. Amazing sounding kit, Glenn. It's pretty cool that you're involved in making a drum plugin. The irony is epic. The guy who hates MIDI drums goes and makes a really good MIDI drum plugin. Fucking genius, dude. Will this work in Contact Player or is it the full version required? I've been a long time subscriber. I'm also Falconated. Been watching you for years. I've just been learning quietly. Have a nice day, Glenn. Hey, Ryan. Yes, it will work in Contact Player. No problem at all. All you got to do is head on over to Native Instruments and grab yourself a copy of Extinction Level Event. Yeah, this is the thing. You can sit around and bitch or you can try and do better. I think the technology, as far as drum samples go, is starting to mature much in the same way that, you know, five years ago, the guitar amp sim technology started to mature. And now we're getting some really good stuff. I think we're going to see some really great shit uh, coming out in the future in terms of drum samples. The trick is we also need some really good instruction showing you guys how to not 127 the drums to death and maybe program in a little bit more realism. Now, if you want to get some of that, I'd say head on over to Spectre Digital and Spectre Academy and check out Henning Pauly's complete guide to drum programming because he lays it all out in a massive lesson that really spells it all out in a really cool way. Definitely worth checking out. Don't forget about gullible sound engineers always lusting for the next snake oil in form of transformer equipped mic freeze, vintage saturating tube compressors, or magically clipping digital converters. I might be one of them if I could afford it. So honestly, what are you hunting down for a secret weapon to win against the competition, Mr. Fricker? Ooh, funny you mention that. I just shot that video uh, the other day that's in editing right now. Hopefully that's going to be out on Tuesday and it's going to be called Seven Reasons Why Audio Engineers Are Gullible Morons, myself included. Uh, what really cool piece of gear have I been hunting down? It's just arrived. Let me show you guys. This is the Tegler EQP-1, and it is a stereo Pultec style passive tube EQ. I've been drooling over one of these for a while. I only had to go to Berlin to go get it. Um, I've got a very cool interview with the Tegler guys coming up. We take a walk through their shop, show you how it's all put together and that kind of stuff. That'll be coming out in my 30 day blitz in November where I do 30 videos in 30 days. It's going to be an awful lot of fun. The Tegler guys were very, very gracious and uh, they've got some really cool stuff coming out. Um, some 500 series pre's as well that are going to be a little bit more affordable and offer maybe a little bit of that nice saturation we go for every now and then. Um, I wanted to get this because I wanted to get, you know, I've been lusting after a Pultec 2 BQ for the longest time. Plugins are okay. I mean, like in, in some cases, they're even better than hardware units as we showed with the Clark Technic versus the Waves plugin. The Waves plugin just fucking destroyed it in terms of sound. And that's not bullshit. I mean, like, it was better sound. This is in a different league than the Clark thing. This thing weighs a fucking ton. There's actual transformers inside this thing. And, um, you know, this would double as a blunt force trauma weapon. I haven't plugged it in yet. I'm really looking forward to giving it a spin uh, in the next few days because I think got a feeling this is going to live on my guitar bus.
But if I were to sit here and tell you guys, oh no, I've never made a bad purchase for my studio in my life, I'd be an absolute fucking liar. Of course I've bought things that I didn't need and regretted down the road. It just fucking happens. I should really do a comment show on, from you guys uh, where you write in and tell me what was the worst studio purchase you ever made. That might be a real fun episode, actually. Hmm. Leave a comment below. I want to hear from you. What was the worst piece of studio gear you ever bought? What And how much did you waste on it? I want to hear from you guys. Leave a comment below, please. I'd love to do that show. And I think Slash said in a recent Gibson video that he prefers rosewood fretboards over ebony because ebony are too snappy. You should tell him there's no such thing as tonewood, much less toned fretboards. Why would I tell him anything when Jim Lil's video just destroyed that whole notion? He constructed a guitar without a neck at all. He strung strings between two tables and it sounded just like his original Telecaster. Why the fuck do I need to say anything about it when we actually have evidence that proves that point? Ironically, this video was interrupted by two ads from grifters trying to sell me their ultimate secret super guitar systems, which are usually just repackaged explanations of the C-A-G-E-D and 3 NPS. Hey, Rusty, thanks for writing again. It's been a while since we heard from you. Thanks for coming back, man. It's always glad to hear from you. Uh, I think that's kind of hilarious. Uh, I don't know what the super secret guitar system is. Uh, we've got a few courses on Spectre Digital, you know, mostly about programming drums and mixing. I don't think we have a quite... Uh, guitar system thing figured out yet, but I'm pretty sure it's coming. Now, I just had Ty Christian from Lords of the Trident come in yesterday, and we were doing a couple videos for his upcoming vocal lesson thing. And it's going to be really cool because it's not just a vocal lesson. It's also going to be how to work on your stage moves and your banter and how to engage the audience. Because I don't think anybody's really come, come up with a uh, system for that yet. And Ty's got some pretty interesting insights on that. That's going to be coming up in the very near future. You guys are definitely going to want to watch for that. Now, as for guitar lessons, I'd really recommend my friends Robert Baker or Perfecto De Castro. I got to hang with Perfecto uh, last summer at 42 Gear Street in Germany, and Perfecto is just such an awesome dude. He showed me a couple of really cool techniques that I'm trying to work in, and it's definitely going to take a little bit of time, but the dude is just such a great teacher, and he's so common and can pinpoint exactly where you need to make improvement. Really amazing dude. We're going to have him on the show over the next couple months. I think uh, really looking forward to having him on here because I think... I think he's just an amazing dude. I know a guitarist who can't pay his rent, buy gas, or afford a date yet. Bought a $1,300 Lakeezle that was the one, but is now trying to sell it because he's bored, LOL. Sounds like someone needs to practice. Yes, I have fallen victim to the Excalibur Syndrome. I walked into a guitar store and found nothing that I liked until I walked into the acoustic room. There she was, a brand new Alpine white with a gall gaudy gold plate trim that you could expect on a new Gretsch Falcon Rancher displayed on a wall with no six spotlights on it. I buckled under the pressure and whipped out the credit card. Yes, she is the prettiest girl in the harem, but she is also damn near unplayable and really nothing more than a boat anchor. I do regret that purchase. Word to the wise guys, if you have to whip out your credit card to pay for it, you probably shouldn't be buying it! You know, uh, the one system I've used over the years is simply this. Yes, you can have a credit card, and it might make your ease of purchase work, but never, ever, ever, ever borrow money you don't have with a credit card to buy something you don't need. Always make sure if you're gonna use your credit card that you've already got the cash in your bank and you can pay it off instantly because running up a credit debt is a sucker's game. Dang, just when I thought it could be possibly the next to fill another episode of content, there it is. Is there no end? But did you ever play those Optima strings? Those really are the best sounding strings, but they are the worth the price of admission. But let's say I'm sticking with my blue steel cryogenically frozen strings. Well, now I'm really sounding like the guitar guy this episode is featuring. But just because I'm lazy when it comes to string changing and they last longer. Yes, we did do the Optima Gold episode. And yes, they did suck ass. As many of you guys pointed out, Gold is non-magnetic reactive, so it's really just adding weight to the string without adding actually anything that's going to move the magnetic field. And uh, yeah, I was pretty surprised by the tone shift we got from regular strings to the Optima Gold, and no, it was not for the better. They sounded pretty horrible. Ozzy introduced me to my mind, but you, sir, helped me pull my head out of my rear end. Anytime, dude. Guitarists have addictive personalities. Me, who smokes cigarettes, drinks caffeine, lace beverages, smokes weed, had a painkiller addiction 12 years ago. You're crazy. What do you mean, addictive personalities, bro? I'm perfectly fine, LOL. Sadly, even if we outgrow those addictions, we tend to grow another addiction, and that is acquiring new gear. Using credit cards we don't need with money we don't have. Ain't it great being a musician? And glad guitarism is a religion for many, whereas with other religions, the more ardent followers tend to be the more feeble-minded. That's why Tonewood exists in electric guitars as a concept. It requires faith because there is no proof in existence. <laughs> Man, you couldn't be more right. Yeah, Tonewood. Um, here's, here's this guitar. This is the Rough guitar. It's made out of a new material called Rafane. It's a composite um, engineered in Poland. This has got to be one of the finest guitars I have ever played. It is absolutely brilliant. Uh, the fretboard is like compressed paper of all things it's solid as a rock and 
What can I say? You know, the neck doesn't pull when the room heats up. Uh, it stays in tune real, real well and sounds absolutely magnificent. Now, I debuted this guitar on Tuesday. If you haven't checked that video out, I'd highly recommend it. I would have a link for that at the end of today's video. It's not only guitar players that fall for things like vintage and snake oil. I have a friend who goes on Gearspace for pro opinions and confirmation bias on gear. He spent 50k easily on vintage and high-end gear, converters, preamps, etc. Many purchases are straight from forum members peddling the gear. He'll take the complete stranger's opinion as gospel and let that guide him because he thinks that better gear will make his music and mixes sound better. It hasn't, but he still refuses to believe that the problem is his skills or his ears. Man, I can sympathize with the guy because I spent a lot of time on Gear Sluts as well and got a lot of bad advice, especially when it came to recording metal guitar. I mean, like, I was trying to get the, the Nordstrom sound and they were like, and this is going back 2005, something like that. They're like, oh yeah, you got to get the original 5150 cabinet with the 5150 speakers, the Sheffield. Yeah, I did a video on that, oh, those a couple weeks back and they sound fucking horrible. The worst fucking speakers ever. And we struggled and struggled and struggled with that record. And we wasted so much fucking time because I got shitty advice on that forum and that's the thing about forums. Nobody has any sound examples. It's not like YouTube where people can fucking actually demonstrate, hey, this sounds good. Hey, this doesn't sound good. Here's the fucking example. No, you're just taking somebody's word for it. And yeah, that's a great place to get some horrible advice. The only thing I'd say to your friend if you drop $50,000 on gear for vintagey stuff and saturation stuff and all that kind of crap, how much did he actually spend on his acoustic treatment? That's the really important question. Christ on a bike, the scammer is absolutely relentless in the comments. Remember dudes, you absolutely haven't been randomly selected to win a prize. Now that comment's a few weeks old, but I thought I'd bring that up. For anybody who did fall for that, I feel bad for you. I've given enough warnings. Uh, YouTube seems to have finally that got that under control. Remember the text me on Telegram scam that was going on? Finally, that seems to have been dealt with. That's not creeping up in the comments anymore. Thank Crom, or at least thank the YouTube gods for that one. Oh, that was a bunch of bullshit because I had to like, you know, kill comments every fucking day you know just spend so much time fucking around erasing that because they were like cockroaches they just appear again out of nowhere with a slightly different handle oh text me on telegram you want something and unfortunately a few of you dumb motherfuckers were fell for it and sent those people your money <sighs> not everybody on the internet is nice unfortunately i try to help as much as i can but seriously if it sounds too good to be true yes it is I believe I feel. Yeah, sure. Now, can you feel the metronome instead? Based on a harrowing true story. Yeah, if you're talking about your drummer, no. No, he cannot. And we've all been there and we've all dealt with that guy. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching all that good stuff. Make sure you grab that free copy of the brand new Celestian Vintage 30 Impulse Response uh, that's up for grabs. All you gotta do is follow the link in the description below. And if you want to watch some more content, if you want to see a review of this incredible Rafane guitar, and you want to know what the answer to the question, what the hell is Rafane, check out the video right here. I put it out last Tuesday. This guitar is just absolutely wicked. It's one of the finest instruments I've ever had in here. Uh, and the, the flint finish is utterly flawless. That's the really good thing too. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Watch the video.